Yo, yo, mic check, one, two, one, two. What's good, everybody? Hope your Sunday is going great. And yeah, my name is Focus on the Flow Mo Crew on bboydojo.com. We are about to start something special over here, which is the International Teacher Camp. This is the first first broadcast regarding the teacher camp and we have an honorary guest today who is DJ Timber Timber Tron the one and only horsepower DJs let's see let's see let me see who comes on board And we're about to get started in a couple of minutes. But first up, before we get our guest online, let me run through a little bit about what's going down, what's going to happen with the teacher camp. <clears throat> Starting off 2022, we got some ill things coming up for the B-boys and B-girls. With the international teacher camp that starts today with the live knowledge drops by guests. Uh, we start start off with Timber first, of course. We have coming up. We have Cross One to build about promoting and marketing and the business aspect of the dance. Uh, we got Alienness coming to build on sharing as a mission. The way that he moved to Europe and started rocky workshops like crazy, inspired half the European b boys at the time, at least. So. Sharing as a mission, we're going to build with Ness. And also Jeremy from Break Free is going to be one of, one of the live knowledge drop people. Namaste. So, of course, they've been doing huge things with Break Free in Texas. And I'm happy to get him on board. Alongside with my, of course, they've both been killing it during the last years. Besides that, we go deeper with the camp. We go deeper with the camp with... Um, live master classes and lectures that will start one and a half weeks from now. So for the two weeks we rock lives first and then we move on to the more intensive lectures where we're going to have some people who went through the teacher course of the dojo join up. You can get all of this if you go to bboydojo.com slash teachers camp and book your spots so you'll be sure to receive all of the information. One more time, bboydojo.com slash teachers camp. Shout out to all the dojo team for making it happen. It's been a big push. and We're doing it for the worldwide community of breakers. So without further ado, let's get our guest on board. Who is DJ Timber? Bam. Let's see, let's see. Accept. Hello. Oh, 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 oh. Team of Trump. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. How are you doing, Mister? It's been a minute. Good. How are you? Yeah, all good over here. Greetings from Finland. We need to get you over one day again. That would be lovely. What's up, Jerome? Fresh effects in the house. Brup, brup. <laughs> Can you open the house? Oh shit! Keep rocking the house. All the big, all the big guns joining in. Apparently, big guns. Here we go. How's life treating you <clears throat> overseas? It's good. Um, I just had a baby girl three months ago. Uh, so if you do hear some crying, uh, that'll probably be her. <laughs> right. And uh. Uh, life is good. I le learned to cut my own hair. Ooh, no skills. <laughs> yeah, all, all the b-boy barbers are going to unfollow me right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, very, had, very glad to hear that life is doing good and, and you feel good and healthy and inspired. So, Thank so, you very much for having me on. Huh? Th thank you very much for having me on. My pleasure completely, and the pleasure of the team. So I guess we can jump right into it. Like I was speaking of, over here earlier, 
the topic for the next couple of weeks is going to be teaching. It's going to be a teaching month at the dojo. We're going to have a bunch of different guests. And we're going to start off with the most important aspect, which is the music. And that's why you're over here. The essence of funk is the theme of the day. Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, I, I worldwide. started to so I guess maybe you can share share first of all how did you get into DJing? How did you get into deeper go, going deeper with music and how did that change the way you saw breaking? Well for me it it all started because I wanted to break and um I didn't have any music to break to. This is pre well, I don't know if it's pre internet, but it's the very early days of the internet. And uh trying to learn how to do a windmill off of instructions on, was it breakdance.com or one of those websites that was just text? Org, yeah. Yes, that's the one, bboy.org. Um, yeah. Get your left it, it, it all under, just... your, under your head and rotate on your upper back. Right? Yeah. Get that yeah. going Maybe. legs open. <laughs> yep start flying and then stop flying and then start flying again i was like oh my god this is, this is not happening yeah um, so we uh, what's up so that was the beginning for you and from there on music took over right? yeah yeah so it was like i i never wanted to be a dj i still don't want to be a dj um yeah i'm just a dj stuck in or b-boy stuck in the body of a dj i guess uh my, my passion was always breaking it was always that the dance um and then it just uh i guess one thing led to another like i just started buying records because that was the only way i could get hip-hop and funk music in any format and um, from there it just spiraled i started uh I think it really it really started when I lived in Manchester and um, some guy told me he wanted breakers to come and dance at his night and I was like well because he's like I want to have like a room just for breakers and I was like oh that's cool you got a DJ and he's like uh, no and I was like oh I could do that and he's like sweet you're booked <laughs> <laughs> and then from there people from different cities came across to Manchester for the night it was called Fridge Fry um, big shout out to anyone that was there um, and yeah it uh, I, I don't know, my, my, my thing was never just the DJ b-boy events or breaking events. It was always... Funk uh, and everything that is kind of related to that. Um, so I started there and then after, I don't know, six months, someone asked me to go and DJ at a night in Leeds, which is one hour away from Manchester. And it all just tumbled from there. Um, then I started going internationally, and then we met in Sweden, right? 2006? Yes, indeed. 2006, Sweden. Yeah. What's the name so, of the town? The crazy festival outside of Stockholm. Uh, Hultsfred, right? Hultsfred, yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> There's many yes. stories for that weekend we can't repeat. <laughs> So but uh that was would... <laughs> my first uh, impression of timber is that he jumps in a van that i'm in like door opens up and timber jumps in and that's it oh shit there's like two meters of irish <laughs> person on everybody's lap <laughs> there's only uh, one way to make a first impression right yep all guns blazing um <laughs> But the, there's another story from that weekend that I want to touch on in a little bit. But I, I guess for me, like the whole DJ thing came about because I just wanted to break and nobody was playing the music that I wanted to break to. So it was left up to me. And, uh, you know, you, you've got two choices in life. You do something or you don't. Um, and... Uh, yeah, all of a sudden, like I'm flying around the world, DJing at different events in different places, and connecting with people from all over the world, and it's just been a it's been a crazy journey. Um, 
and like the the more I did it, the more I understood, and the more tools I used, the more my knowledge of music and breaking grew. Um, what's up, Swifty? Um, so yeah, that was that was that that was my uh, that was my beginning, and I guess that was my middle, and it's still my end. It's just my love for dance is it fueled my my passion for DJ and breaking events. Um, the head spin master is here, honey. Um, yeah, and uh, it all just spiraled from there, really. Uh, and the more I, the more I did it, the more I learned. The more, and as a DJ, you get to see breaking from a different perspective, because my perspective from of like uh, breaking is me doing it, but. Also, my perspective of me breaking as a DJ is me watching it. So it, it, it teaches you a lot of different things. And I mean, as a DJ, I would always try and do something that was original, but it kept within the same foundation of DJ and breakbeats and hip hop that I learned from. So that gave me the opportunity to talk to a lot of people sit down have conversations with people watch people who inspired me and like one of the most beautiful things is that those who inspired me then i was able to inspire them by the way i dj'd and it's uh yeah i'm sitting here today talking with you which is big pleasure hey. for me big honor for you and uh, I, I re like all the other DJs, they wrote me and they said, we said no. So I'm like the seventh choice, was it? But <laughs> <laughs> no Number one. Yes. Um, and yeah, so, so, so I want to get to this story about Sweden. Um, I'm pretty sure you know the one I'm talking about when I was DJing. Okay. Go ahead. I want you to tell it, and then I'll tell it from my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess I guess we we're speaking about the same story. From my perspective, is that I hear a dope ass tune, something that makes me move. There's a circle going down. I see a D DJ that jumps off the turntables and starts rocking a head spin. So I'm like, shit, that's nice. A nice head spin. But I like the song so much, so I rock the floor right after you and the, the whatever, do a killer solo that makes me move. Bam, 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 get up, finish, get out. That's the story from my perspective. Are you okay? That's not what happened. <laughs> yeah, right, so I, I was DJing and it was, it was just cypher time. And I was like, oh, I want to go and throw it on. So I, I put on, I don't. I don't I don't even remember what it was. I want to say it's um I can't help myself by James Brown, the big drum break it did like two, three quarter three quarters of the way through it. It goes on for like a minute. So it was it was one of those tunes that it goes on and there's enough time for me to go down, wait for whoever to finish, do my set, and then go back. So I, I music's taken over. And I'm like, rah, rah, rah. And then I finished in like a W freeze, pointing towards you. And then you came in and you did, I swear you did like six air flares off one hand. <laughs> you did a head spin that started floating up in the air. You did uh, like a baby mill that went under the stage and then came back up again. You did all this crazy shit. And then you finished staring at me and all the rest of Flomo just started laughing at me. <laughs> Oh, that's exactly what all like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then I turned around and I just went off and I started DJing again. <laughs> <laughs> like I have nothing to say to this. So my place. I'll go back to playing music. But it's <laughs> I, I, it, it is. I I think that's one of the most treasured moments of my breaking career is you know you always try and punch above your weight, right? As a as a breaker, you go for some, and I don't know if I went in with the intention of, oh, I'm gonna call out focus. I think I just went in and I was like, oh, I'm just feeling this.
And um, because cause normally like people are, yeah, they'll play with me and, but no, I just got destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember, I think, who was it? Was Mercy there that weekend? No, I don't Mercy think he was. Had solo was there. I think Rome and Vortex. Uh, it was Vortex. I just remember his laugh. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, you can smoke, boy." Yeah. But um, really yeah, that's, yeah, and it, it was all love. There was no. It was just a just a fun time of me getting put in my place. <laughs> No beef involved. It's all good. Hmm. But I guess I guess we can move on. Since the topic is teaching. Um uh, mm -hmm. a breaker. Why do you think a breaker should go deeper in music than just to the songs that they hear on, on the live streams? What what does a breaking teacher benefit from the fact that he or she will go deeper in music? Well, I, th I think it comes down to more more information is better, right? Um, the more you know, it can't hurt you. And um, like for for me, the whole reason behind breaking after after I um, after the initial fascination of this sensation of flying that breaking gives us was uh, it, it soon turned into the reaction to the music. So the music does one thing and then I have to react to it. And that became like my main motivation for, for breaking. And I think I think one of the biggest compliments someone ever said to me was uh, Ben Jeezy from Actitud Salvaje. He said, um, you know, the way, the way you DJ is like, when I hear you, I see you break in. So it all, matched yeah um and i just like uh ale como estas? um what's up mikey Be rad dads in the house um yeah it's just uh it's it's all about it's, all, it's always been about the music for me about that just you know the more you learn it's just it just expands and expands and expands your knowledge of of breaking because if you take like salsa for example People dance to rhythms, and then those songs, the, the music, they use the same rhythms. And then so people know, like, for, for me, hip hop is all about that boom, bap, boom, bap, boom, boom, bap, bap, boom, bap, ba -dum, boom, bap. So that's all what I always look for in, in music. And um, it, uh, yeah, it's just been a crazy journey. Um, I forgot what's going on about there. He says, um, "Yeah, it's for for me. Music is number one, and there's no there's no other reason to be breaking or dancing other than music. Like it's it's cool to have tricks and to show off and rah rah, but uh, it's all about the tunes for me. It's all about that groove, and you know you you're trying to express what you're hearing. You're trying to portray and become like the physical embodiment of that sound." And that's why, I, like, that's that's that really defines the way I, I DJ. Is like, when I hear this, does it make me want to break? And that's not just from a like a, a sound, sound, like, the, does it fit fit in with the groove of of what I think like breaking music should be. That makes sense. It's full sense, yeah. So, from a breaker's perspective, okay, classic question: makes it on SoundCloud or Real Records? Um, if I want to break, I want to listen to a mix, like a mixtape. I don't want to listen to a record, um, because for me, that's 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 the DJ's job: is you loop the the break beats, so. You get that break, and then you maybe get a little bit afterwards, and then you get the break again. And you like, you know what? what I think what Kenny said: you break on the break. 
so it's that's what it's it's been about for me is like when i create a mixtape i want people to to be able to feel the groove and then get hit boom by the break beat um and that's that's always the way i've i've dj like it's it's a little different when i make a mixtape than when i join uh, like a, when i'm djing at a an event um because with an event you know you have a little more freedom you have a little more room but a mixtape the way i make them is like i think okay i'm going to take this mixtape to like a practice spot and i just want to go and practice breaking for an hour um but with a with an event you know you, you get a little bit more, more playful with um how you dj you maybe play a little bit more of the record you give it a little bit more of a build up and then the break hits boom but you know if you're going to listen to that mixtape time and time again you don't necessarily want to hear that so the way i structure my mixtapes is is um i want i want it to be uh like just you you put it on and you're an autopilot yeah you lose control you break mm -hmm. <laughs> from that from that normal normal uh whatever mode you put yourself in how do you test your records yep. You find a new so, break, how do you test it? Do you test it in an event? Do you test it on a mix straight? Or how does it how does it work for you? So there's there's various different ways, but my my stand up uh test is always like uh I play it after Apache. And if it if it holds up against oh. Apache or if it holds up against it's just begun, okay, we got something. And if it doesn't, maybe not. You know, there's a lot of breaks that you hear, and it kind of sounds like it's good, but then it's not. And then you're like, ah, eh, whatever, put it aside. Um, and for for me, the big thing is like, um, does it make me? Does it give me that boom bap feeling? Um, what's up, Wicked, the man himself? Big yeah. I love that though. Uh, like, can stand next to the foundation. Does this is strong enough to be mm -hmm. of a party of just behind yeah. any other ultimate break and beat, for example? Mm -hmm. so, and it's it's the same thing with like any any genre of music. If like a hip hop track, does it stand up to a DJ premiere, or does it stand up to a Tony Touch? Does it stand up to Tribe Called Quest? And if the answer is no, then yeah, maybe you can put it in the event somewhere, but you don't want the spotlight to be on that very moment. Because it's, it's nice to give a big variety of music, Coffee Mambo. Um, it's nice to give like a big variety of music to people. Uh, but if it's going to go on a mixtape, I want it to have that straight like B-Boy, B-Girl flavor to it um yeah the the way i uh, so i also um like the way i dj events i throughout i don't know whenever when did serato start 2006 2007 i got serato yeah somewhere around there then i really started learning about beats per minute and the tempo of music um and that's for me is when i really started being able to understand what works for breaking and what doesn't work so well for breaking because i would hear records with like a really fast drum break and i was like oh this is kind of kind of hype but then i realized that when i tried to break to it i couldn't stay on beat like i couldn't follow the one two three four one two three four i would hit like one and then I'd hit like a three and then i hit a one and then I'd hit a four and then i'd hit a two and the way I danced was wasn't in sync with the the time of the music. So I started um, experimenting a lot with slowing the tempos down, and I, I hate the use of the word slow because it implies to me it implies like laziness. Like if I want to break slow, I will that's not what it is for me like lower tempos you go boom then you hit bang, boom, bang. 
and it's not just like which is what a lot of people seem to be trying to do with breaking it's just but when you slow the tempo down it's not boom ba boom ba and uh yeah that's that's what i really started experimenting with with dj and breaking events was bringing the tempos down there's some events i i didn't even go above like 105 vpm which is considered slow by some people and the reaction of the people that were there, that were there it was like everyone was vibing more there was a lot more like people seem to feel more comfortable because it's one thing if you're playing 130 bpm music and you drop something at 105 bpm then it sounds slow mm -hmm. but if you build it up 90 you go to 95 you go to 100 you go to 105 you go back to 95 and you play around with the tempos like that then people get in that rhythm and that groove and it um it really brings out a different side of people and as so many people come up to me and say like uh like, I don't know why, but I feel so much more comfortable breaking when you're DJing. And I was like, well, I can explain exactly why. And it's because of the way I use the tempos and I don't push everything. And uh, like, it, it happened to me at a few bigger events where people like, uh, play faster music, play faster music. And I'm like, no, this is not, it's not, uh, we're not on coke. You know what I mean? It's not. We want. That was great competition right there. Yeah. And um, you know when when they when they said that like on the mic, I was like, I I didn't know what to make of it at first, but then I I thought you know I'm gonna go and really do my research on this. So there's a there's a record by Bernard Purdy called uh i think it's like drum solos or something it's just got a cover of him like a drawing of him and it's only him playing the drums there's no bass there's no trumpets there's nothing it's just it came out somewhere in the 90s and he does like all the the classic records that he played on like blackbird's theme and um storm actually he gave me a copy of it when i was at his house in 2005 he's like hey timber have this and um, I don't know what, if he realized was what he gave me. <laughs> um, but that record, it, uh, it really revolutionized the way I think about DJing um, because it was just the drum break for three minutes. So I could go and I could practice. I just practiced trying to top rock the whole thing start to finish and see how it felt at different tempos. And the more I did it, the more I realized that maybe wasn't the way forward. Um, and yeah, it uh, it really um, it really opened my eyes to a lot of what I was doing as a DJ and as a as a b boy as a breaker um and shaped the way I, I started DJing because I, I then understood what would happen to me when I was trying to break at 125, 130 BPM. Um and like if if anyone hasn't seen it, I did a video breaking down all the different BPMs. It's called something like BPM explained by DJ Timber for B boys, B girls and extra trash deals or <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna look at that. I remember. Yeah, we gotta look it up and post it again. Really good reaction. I had a really good reaction when I put it out. Um, a lot of people commenting like, "This is what we've been trying to say, but didn't know how to say it." Mm, yeah. Um, and yeah, it, you know, it's there's there's two different emotions like or two things things happen when i hear music for breaking the first is like the how does it sound like does it have that sound and then the second is does it have the rhythm and is it at a certain tempo that fits with what i see fitting for breaking oh oh 
There's one thing that you taught me once. I was staying at your place in Barcelona at the time. Mm -hmm. Sleeping next to a bunch of records. <laughs> and one thing that you told me was that focus whenever you go to any city, if you run into any single James Brown record, then, then buy it. Yeah. Any James Brown record, bring it home. And mm -hmm. I've been trying to keep up with that. And do you think that's something that's a good advice for the next generation too? I don't know if people go digging anymore or not, or the new well, generation. Yeah, funnily enough, I, after you left my house, all of my James Brown records just disappeared. I was like a whole layer, a big ass back backpack with me on the plane home. I, 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 I think I see them behind you. Uh, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, food for thought, right? Pass the piece. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, first, Icy Brothers. Leroy Hudson, uh, Donald Birds, because it's like those, those are the, the real founders of breaking. They came before the moves. The music is like, a, you know, it, it's funny. Um, I used to chat to DJ Lacey on the phone um, when I first moved to England. And he was just driving me crazy. And I never asked him for any song names or anything like that. And I was like, I just got to ask him. I was like, oh, what, what is this one? And he said, have you heard of a group called Mandrill? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, go look him up. Hmm. And I was like, okay. So I went and bought every single Mandrill. So many like really good mango uh, mandrel records from that um, that you know I was trying to find one thing and he just give me twenty um, and that, yeah that 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 was I, I I actually I eventually found out what it was and it was by the JVs um, and yeah it's you know that. The fact when I did find out it was the JBs, I was like, "Yo, I got to do my homework more. I got to look up all the James Brown stuff. I got to look up all the J, uh, JBs um, and everything that's related to them." And um, yeah, I actually uh, I had the I, I met James Brown at a, a music festival in when he died two thousand eight seven seven right. It was so he died on Christmas Day or yeah. Christmas Eve. Um, and it was the August before that. Uh, um, I was at a, at a music festival DJing for, you remember Freestyle, who was the MC from uh, Holtzfred? The Arsonist, mm -hmm. yeah. He, he called me and he's like, yo, can you, uh, can you come and DJ for me at this thing? I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, and he's, he says, like, okay, I don't know like, if I can get you much money or whatever. Um, and I said, well, who's playing at the festival? And he goes, uh, James Brown. And I'm like, okay, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. i am pay my own ticket. I don't care. <laughs> so um, I, I flew over. To, it was in, just outside of Dublin. I flew over to Dublin. And um, they came and they got me. And we were just so hyped about seeing James Brown. It was all we talked about the, the whole of the first day. Um, and... The people who were organizing our stage, they said, oh, "Okay, guys, you can uh, you can stay and watch James Brown." And seeing as he's the last act at the festival, it might take three hours to get out of here and get back to the hotel, or we can go now and we'll get out of here in like ten minutes. And I looked at Free and I was like, "Free, have you ever seen James Brown live before?" And he's like, "No." And I was like, "Well, that's it. We're staying." Yeah. Uh, and we had an hour before the concert, and we walked past his dressing room when uh we were going for lunch and i was like yo what do you want to do now and he's like uh starts looking at me and i'm start looking at him and like should you go knock on his door <laughs> he's like yeah let's do it so we went to the dressing room 
And uh, we knocked on the door. We went, we went in, there was like a curtain. And then there was another curtain behind the other curtain. So I, I went in through the first curtain and I'm looking in through the second curtain. And I just hear this <laughs> behind me. I was like, oh my God, I know that voice. <laughs> He's here. Looks like, I'm, <laughs> looks like I'm trying to sneak in and steal shit out of James Ryan's dressing room. Um, so when I turned around and there was like a, there was, it was all this like white wood that had all been constructed for these dressing rooms. And there was a sign on the wood and it said, Mr. Brown, please knock. And it's, then I saw it was the door. So I, I signaled to free. I'm like, what do I do? Like, what do I do? And he's like, knock it. And I'm like, you knock it. And he's like, you knock it. So I'm like, oh, fucking knock on the door. <laughs> and I, I had it in my head, don't call him James, call him Mr. Brown, because he's the godfather. And mm. uh, it was Charles Bobbitt opened the door, James Brown's longtime manager. And I was like, oh, hi, uh, is it possible we can meet James? I mean, uh, Mr. Brown, please. And he goes, <laughs> not now, son. He's busy. But just wait there. So I go back in the hallway and we're like, oh, I'm going to meet James Brown. And I was like, he's got no way out. He's got to walk past us. And then we're like, what if he's a dick? <laughs> what if he's like not a nice guy? And we're like, oh, well, we're, we're in it now. So we waited there for like five minutes. And then... Um, Charles Bobbitt sticks his head out the door and he goes, okay guys, you come in now. So we went in and um, he sat there, just in his chair, happy as can be. And he, he puts out his arm and shakes our hands and Frisa says to him, uh, oh, I just had to meet you before I died. <laughs> and he meant to say before you died. <laughs> and he starts laughing, he goes, you're not gonna die, son. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we we left um, we left the dressing room, and we told every single person we met, "Yo, guess who we just met?" <laughs> we went around the whole festival, telling people we we we, we met James Brown. We met James Brown, and it was like the telling people. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the, the the two biggest fanboys ever, <laughs> but we did it, oh. and. Uh, there was another guy performing on the same stage as us called Shlomo. He's a beatboxer from, from Leeds. And I was chatting to him on a Saturday. I was like, These men. I know the name, and, but I never met him. Like, I know he knows a bunch of people I know. And it's like the most generic English name, too, Dave Smith. Um, and uh, he's like, okay, he's coming tomorrow to do my sound. I'll introduce you to him. I was like, oh, sweet. So. The day afterwards, um, we're still on this whole guess who I just met shenanigans. And um, mm -hmm. we go to, I, Shlomo goes, oh, the timber, this is um, Dave. And I'm like, oh, what's up, Dave? Uh, yeah, you're friends with rah, 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 rah. Like, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you are. And um, I was, the first the second thing comes out of my mouth is, um, oh, guess who we met? And he's like, hold on a minute. Now I've heard this story of two different people about these two Egypts from this festival that went and knocked on James Brown's dressing room door and went in and had a chat with him. That was you, wasn't it? I was like, you're damn fucking straight it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Full circle. yeah, so we, we became these mini legends of this festival too. So that was kind of cool. Dope, man. Dope. Memories. Yeah. Uh, hmm. From the teaching perspective too, speaking of James, how would, mm -hmm. you, how would you break down the one for somebody uh, who heard about it or needs, needs so it's, oh, if you were teaching funk to somebody, how would you break down the one? It's like the boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, bam, boom, bam. That's my way of explaining it. I'm sure you can do a better job. So I'm going to ask you the same question. <laughs> oh, shit. I can save it for later. I can save it for later. But that's Timber's interpretation of the one. The super bad. <laughs> super bad. Yeah. Way. It's super bad in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Well, show. Sure. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, then, then also speaking about... Speaking about salsa and, and different rhythms, you spoke about the rhythms perspective. You spoke about the mood and the rhythms. 
what is mm-hmm. when it comes to when it, when it comes to salsa and rhythms that you learn from there that you could give to the people who want to le- learn to break better was there something uh, that your eyes about rhythm so i i think the main thing that um so I, I'll give a little background. I got into salsa in, in Barcelona. I used to go to a lot of salsa concerts and jam sessions, and it was all about that vibe. And it's the same vibe that I got from Breaking. It's the same, like, that old school New York 70s, just grimy music. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of annoyed me for a while because people were like, oh, Timber, does he still like DJ breaks and stuff? Or I thought he's just a salsa DJ now. And it's like, no, I do. You know, my breaking game is still up, going up and up and up. And my salsa game's going up and up and up on the other side. And they both go hand in hand to me. Mm-hmm. It's not one thing or the other. It's, you know, it's like liking break beats, but you don't like hip hop music. Or you like hip hop music, but you don't like break beats. It's, for me, it's the same. It's the same thing. Um, and. I think the biggest thing I learned from salsa is when you dance with someone else, you can't go off time the way you can when you're breaking. Because when you're breaking, for the majority of the time, you're on your own. You're not dancing with someone who's trying to mirror you. Yeah. So if, if you're hitting like one, three, five, seven, and then you start hitting two, four, five, seven, you're, you're not following the same pattern. And if you're doing that with someone in front who's looking at you in the eyes, they're not going to be looking in your eyes very long. <laughs> they're going to be like, what's this guy doing? Uh, and that, that's what, you know, Salsa really hammered into me about breaking. It's like I watched, started watching breakers and the way they would break. And are they actually staying on time or are they just trying to hit beats? You know, there's a big difference between hitting D beat and hitting A beat. Like it's very easy to hit a beat, but if you want to break properly, you should hit all the beats in the right order. And that's that's the thing that salsa really taught me about breaking is you know it's about staying on time and yeah yeah dope I like that I like that I guess uh, DJ all events. Is one more question I want to ask. How do you deal with DJing long events? Or do you deal with the DJing long events? You see this race? So I'm going to say this with the greatest deal of respect to everyone who's ever stepped on the dance floor. Not everybody needs to watch everybody in a day. And I've always had this argument about prelims or um, qualifying rounds. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to know about it, to be honest with you, because it's like it's like you go to watch a Metallica concert, and you have to watch every single person in Helsinki who owns a guitar play the guitar before you see Metallica. <laughs> And by the time Metallica comes on, you're so tired of watching people play the guitar that you don't even want to watch them. (laughs) And that is what a lot of long events do to me as a a DJ, as a B-boy, as someone who's judged a couple of events. You say, if I have to watch everybody the whole day, it becomes really monotonous. And I think, you know, people, their reply is normally like, oh, like everyone deserves the chance to gain experience. Everyone deserves the chance to have their, their shot. Like, and, but for me, the, letting everybody enter prelims actually has the reverse effect. Because now everybody has their turn. And everybody's so focused on what they're about to do that they kind of for, they forget about the music. They forget sometimes what their set was, and they just focus on this. And this becomes the sole focus of their day. It's just this one battle or exhibition or 
taster of what they do. And they get completely lost in the fact that if you cut the event in half and you had half the people enter the battle, then the other half would have the opportunity just to vibe out and to dance with. Like, how many 10 hour events have you been at where you've felt that you haven't wanted to cipher for like an hour? <laughs> A bunch. A bunch. Yeah, <laughs> Several. So, so it's like, you know, if, if, if we love this, the way like I know you love it and I know the way I love breaking and we feel like this, how does this feel for someone who's come from outside of our immediate hip hop culture to come and watch these events? You know, if, if we get bored there, how does it feel if you're like a complete newcomer and you're like, oh, break an event, I want to go check this out. And you have to watch every single person time after time, time after time. Um, and for, for me, that's like the one of the biggest failings of a, of a lot of events. One solution that I've seen works quite well is what they what they started doing in Singapore at Radical Force, and I know they do it in other places. Is they just have all the prelims going off at the same time. So you got like three or four different prelim battles going off at the same time. As a DJ, for me, that's much more rewarding because I can actually play music and I don't have to tailor it to one battle. I could just, I just start playing music and I just go with the flow and then the breakers have to adapt to what I'm doing. Because when you, when you DJ for, for a breaking battle, you, you kind of want to tailor it so that whenever there's a new person comes in, if you're going to change the beat, they don't change it halfway through the set because that's kind of rude, right? Mm -hmm. But what I find myself that what what that feels like as a DJ is you start doing that and you stop DJing the way you should, the way the music tells you to, and you just start focusing on doing it the way that the event is telling you to. When so when people are changing battles, you change the music, and next guy comes in. Um, Next guy comes in, you change the song, but maybe that break is like halfway through the break, and there's like a. So actually, I had a conversation with Alien Ness, and he's like, when he hears like a break's coming to the end, and the other guy finishes early, he says, Yo, I finish off the last eight beats of his set, bam, then I start my own one. And I was like, That's what it is. Um, and this is the problem with a lot of breakers who just go in with, I'm just going to do this set. You know, there's no, they don't have the ability to change that set. So if you flip the song in the middle or after like eight beats, then they kind of get lost by it. Um, and, you know, I always try to, I, I stopped trying to focus on the, the battle and started trying to concentrate more on the way the music fits together. Uh, and when, when you, so when you take away the prelims from this, everybody's watching it. This is the sole focus of what's going on. And you do three or four prelims at the same time. You don't get this whole like start stop thing with the music because that breaks up the flow with the, with the event. And I find when I, when I can just go and DJ, I don't have to worry about starting and stopping. It's a lot more entertaining for me. And it's, I think it's a lot more entertaining for everyone that's there as well because people really get to soak in the atmosphere. They get to hear the music the way it's supposed to be played. I'm not just start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And if you think of it from like a, a B-boy or B-girl perspective, what's up, Cosmic? Um, it's like you're doing a breaking show uh, and you got to go, you got to do windmills. When they tell you to do windmills, you got to stop. Then they're going to tell you to do footwork. Then you got to stop. Then you go to oh, go do a headspin now and stop, <laughs> and then go do some pop rock and then stop. And there's no continuity to it. And it's like the same for for me as a DJ. And I know a lot of other DJs who have 
been playing for at events for for a while they feel the same way because it's just it's just start stop all the time and you don't get to build anything it doesn't flow there's no continuity to it and i, I always really pushed for this when i whenever i was djing and tried to avoid events where i knew that i wouldn't get any sort of artistic input into the process um and it's like you know when if if i'm djing for a battle and i can tell the people aren't really they're not really listening or maybe they're nervous or they're not feeling it or they just want to do their set and go home then i start looking around and see who is enjoying the music and i'm like oh, okay focus is over there he's going off or moisex is over there he's going off and i'll just watch those people or I'll watch, like, if Ness is judging, I'll watch Ness just there, sitting down in the chair. And that, for me, is way more entertaining than watching people just regurgitate what they practiced. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I, I think for, for when you have a long event, but you get to actually DJ, because for me, DJing isn't playing a song for a battle and then playing a song for another battle. That's not DJing. That's playing music for battles. When you DJ, you, you're able to build, you're able to slow down, you're able to speed up, you're able to change the mood. But if it's just focused on straight battle, 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 there's no, it's not fun anymore for me. And I, I, I don't even think it took me that long to get to the point where I'm like, yeah, this is kind of boring. And it's not, it's not, it's nothing to do with the people who are dancing. It's just the whole process of it. It's start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And just, yeah, just like, like I said, think of it like a, you're going to a Metallica concert. You don't want to hear everyone play the guitar <laughs> before Metallica jumps on, which is kind of the way. And a lot of people, they, they enter the battle and then they leave because they don't, oh, we lost, we'll go home now. And it's like, well, where where's the community in that? You know what I mean? Yes, indeed. This is this is no bueno. <laughs> this is not good. Um, but on the other hand, if you limit the amount of people who are entering the battle, or you change the way you do prelims so that it's not a focus. Sorry for bringing your name and dirty in your name. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> then um, the events become uh, much more entertaining. El Papa de los Pollitos. It's a valley. Um, the events become much more entertaining. They become a lot more interesting, not only as a DJ, but they become a hell of a lot more interesting for the judges and the audience. Um, and, you know, it's if you take away this focus, then I think people are more encouraged if they see multiple things going on at the same time they're like oh i don't need to watch all the prelims because there's like three different prelims or four different prelims going on at the same time so maybe i can just go over here and we can start some ciphers and we can get a vibe going and and it's 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 kind of cool when you have all these prelims going off but like the hottest circle is way over there in the corner <laughs> Yes, indeed. And uh, yeah, that's 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 what uh, that's how I try and deal with like long events, because you know you're gonna have big events with a lot of people, right? But the the answer isn't always give everyone a time slot. So it really, sort of promote, organize, yeah, like get their timetables and pick in if they're gonna have a million categories or just concentrate on the good stuff, make it entertaining. Entertaining and fun for everybody, including the DJ. Yeah. It's like um, this guy here, Jeff, who organizes um, UB Hill in Toronto. He asked me to come and DJ a couple of his events. And I was like, uh, yeah, but I don't want to DJ any battles. Like, I'm just, I just don't. I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I don't have the patience. Um, I was like, uh, is there a way we can do something here? 
And he's like, do you know what? We're going to have an hour and it's just going to be you. And that's all you're going to DJ. Hey, dope. And I was like, uh, and then he's like, I'll give you a quarter of the money. And I'm like, okay, deal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Um, but no, it, it was just, it was just like the coolest time because, um, you know, the battles were going on and people have a certain expectation when it comes to, um, oh my God, Tony Trejo, T-Rock. How do you feel about DJs repeating the same songs within the same 45 minutes? Bro. <laughs> uh, in Spanish, the answer is no. In English, the answer is no. Finnish, what's Finnish? A. A. Russian, yet? <laughs> no, not happening. That's not good. Um, no, you should. I DJ the. I DJ one event in Barcelona. It was five days long. I did not repeat one single song. There you go. Uh, and if you're going to play the same song that someone played 45 minutes ago, yes, you should repeat the same set. Prelims, first round, second round, all the way to the finals. And if you win, good on the judges, Tony. <laughs> well, T-Rock in the house. Um, yeah. What's that? That was going on. Anyway. Anyhow. Yeah. Say say no to big uh, long ass prelims. Nine. There we go. German. Nine. Gracias, Alemán. Yes, indeed. That is nicht gut. Yeah. You know, you, you, you have to make, for me, you have to make events that are entertaining not just for people within our b-boy and b-girl community but also entertaining for people who are coming in people's girlfriends people's sisters people's cousins people's friends oh i'm going to this breaking event so i do want to come no nah, because last time was like eight hours of just uh, you know what i mean so we I, I think we have a duty to represent ourselves better as a as a culture than just letting everybody have the spotlight for their 30 seconds or 45 seconds of, of fun. And, you know, it's, it's like, um, the, the, way, the, when I started breaking, there was no, there was no battles going on and we would just go to clubs and we would jam out and, but we wouldn't go there and break the whole night. We'd go there and break and then we'd go get drunk and then we'd go fall over somewhere. Um, and it was just like, uh, it was so much more natural than just going to an event and breaking, 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 breaking. And, you know, you, you go there and you break for a couple of minutes, people get a buzz off it, you get a buzz off it, and then you join the party. And um, I, I guess that always stuck with me. Is It's like, you don't have to do this all night long. You don't have to do it all day long. And, you know, if the music tells you to break, you break. Mm, there's a time and place. And I, yeah, I, I, I think it, like one of the one of the biggest things for me that I was ever to, able to achieve as as a DJ and someone who's always tried to make events better was uh, there's an event called Proyecto Sureste in in Murcia, Southeast Project. Um, big shouts to Amado, Rafa, Dika, everybody there, all my whole Murcia fam. Molina de Seguro in the house. Um, and I did it for like four years and there was never anyone, any ciphers. And um, there was one year I, I, Schizo came down with me, the DJ from Barcelona. And we spent the whole time on the train just talking, talking smack and talking about what we're, and I was like, bro, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but when I ask you to do it, I just want you to do it like as good as you can. And he's like, okay, you got it, bro, whatever. Like, your word is is bond. So it got the like the the lot the like a break between rounds, and I went to schizo and I slapped him on the back of the head and I was schizo. Now <laughs> I was like, play me your nastiest set you've got. I don't care what's gonna happen like an hour from now. Just go off. And he looks at me. And he goes, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so then I ran down onto the floor and I see everybody leaving. 
and I'm, I'm grabbing people. And I'm like, bro, come here, come on, I need you, I need you. So I had like 10 people following me around because I told me, oh, te, te necesito, te necesito, ven, ven conmigo, ven conmigo. And um, I grabbed this whole big bunch of people and I just put them right in front of the, 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 the speaker. And I was like, you, baila, go, go, go. Sending them in one after the other. Then I went and grabbed some more people. And I'm like, bro, come here, baby, 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 baby. Go, 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 go. And then we just had this crazy cypher going off for like, 50 people just all trying to just get in at the same time and it was just like the most organic and beautiful expression of, of breaking that you could ever have and um after that i never had to do that again at that event because people just knew they're like okay it's 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 time for for the break now we get the break yeah yeah and that, that was the uh that for me is like one of one of the things that I'm most proud of is being able to do stuff like that at events and get people engaged like that, because that's an engagement that you don't forget. You know, then you're really dancing with your peers. You're not dancing for the judges. You're not dancing for the crowd. You're dancing, and everybody wants it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody wants in that cipher, and you're just there, and it's building, it's building, it's building, and Skizo killed it on the turntables. Oh. And I was so happy and so proud. I was like, "This is, this is what I wanted to bring to Spain when I when I moved there." Is this this atmosphere and this feeling? Um, and pe people just took to it like a duck, like ducks to water. It was like, you know, I I didn't do much, but I just pushed people in that direction, and then it was just like, boom, this is it. Uh, and I, I think like from DJing a lot of events, after that, it really became obvious that this thing started to spread. And it was like, oh yeah, now, now we got it. Now we got it. You know, we're 99% of the way there, just that tiny little push and now we're there. So Yeah. Because yeah. some, sometimes it's like the smallest pieces of advice that make the biggest sense, right? um and yeah that's that's what uh and this goes back to you know the music it wasn't interrupted it just kept flowing and flowing and flowing so it's more natural for people they don't feel this like start stop start i never stop the music unless there's like someone's car that's gonna get towed or whatever <laughs> i never stop the music between battles always keep it going always keep it going even if I have to bring it down so we can find Where's Focus? Where's Focus? He's in the washroom. He's coming. Wait for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Seven. Seven is what we waited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that's how I deal with long events. Oh. Is uh try and shorten them. Oh, inspirational right there. That's dope. I learned a lot today and re inspired on, on a lot of stuff so thank you for sharing your time and it's been a pleasure to see you again man hope to get to get to see you in in who's fred or helsinki or toronto wherever it is in a, in a real quick yes sir time frame let's look up for that clip that you you mentioned before the one that that was breaking down different tempos let's look it up and mm -hmm. also people who haven't seen it get 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 it too there are some nice standing Cool. If you also want to put up my uh, my song clip, no, what is it? Bandcamp page, mm -hmm. djtimber.bandcamp.com. All my mixes are on there. You can buy them or you can listen to them online as many times as you want. If you want to support, feel free. If you just want to listen to them, feel free. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's, it's always good to see you. djtimber.bandcamp.com. Is it? And cam. Cam. Dot. Ali, ¿cómo he hecho? ¿He hecho un buen trabajo con el pelo? There we oh, go. Watching it. Oh. Dot djtimber dot bandcamp dot com. Get get the mixes. Support. There's not too many ways of of uh, getting support for the DJ. So this is one. Do it right away and get get your collection of mixes over there. I rocked to them two days. 
and anybody else, head out to bboydojo.com slash teachers camp and stay tuned for the next ones. Kitos, Paulio, Mr. Timber, and we stay in touch. And I was a Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Gracias, Ale. Okay, Bastante bien. <laughs> no lo has visto de detrás. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having hair jokes with Ali. If you want a haircut in Barcelona, go see Ali Man. Ali, oh, the notorious. For sure. All good in the head. All right. Thank you, everybody. Stay in touch. On to the next one. Peace. Peace.